Welcome everyone, we are starting a new project building an NFT with Brownie and Python. First, we're going to build a smart contract with Open Zeppelin for the NFT inside of a Brownie project. So let's create the Brownie project. For this, you will need NPM installed, Python installed, and the Ganache CLI installed. Then you can go to your terminal or command line and you can create a new project folder such as hello NFT and then enter the folder. Then call Brownie init. This will initialize a new Brownie project. Then we can build our smart contract. We're going to use the popular Open Zeppelin library. For that, we have to install Open Zeppelin contracts into this project. We're going to use npm install to install a package. The package is at Open Zeppelin slash contracts. Great, now we have the folder added. We can open this project with a code editor. Here I've opened the project with Visual Studio Code. You'll notice we have several folders and files from Brownie. We also have package.json and a locked version because we used npm install open Zeppelin. So that immediately created a package.json file which lists the project dependencies. Currently we are using open Zeppelin 4.5 Point o minimum, so that is the only project dependency that we currently have. Inside of our build folder, we don't have any compiled files yet. We don't have any contracts yet or interfaces. In node modules, we have the open Zeppelin library. And we don't have any reports, scripts, or tests either. So let's build our smart contract. We're going to build a Solidity contract for our NFT. So let's go into the contracts folder. Make sure you're not inside of build, but just contracts. And here we're going to create a new file that we could call mynft.solidity. Okay, so here we are inside of mynft.solidity. You do have to have the Solidity extension installed into Visual Studio Code. At the top of the file, we specify what is the license of the file, such as MIT. Then what is the version of Solidity that is used to compile this file? We're going to use 0.8.12, the latest at this time. Then we can build a contract called My NFT for simplicity. Just use the same name that you gave the file. Otherwise, there can be some confusion. Next, we're going to specify that this contract is a child of ERC721 URI storage, which is a contract from Open Zeppelin. So we have to import from our parent folder the node modules slash at Open Zeppelin folder slash contracts and then slash token slash ERC721 slash extensions slash ERC721 URI storage dot solidity. This is the location of the file that we are importing. All right, so we're importing that file, then we have our contract. Okay, also make sure to end the line with a semicolon in solidity. All right, great, so we have that as our parent. I'm also going to add a second parent ownable to the NFT. So for this to work, we do have to import, again, node modules, open Zeppelin contracts, and then not token, but access slash ownable dot solidity, which makes NFTs ownable. And one more that I'm going to use, one more helper file, is from utils and it will be counters.solidity. So that way we can make our NFTs countable. Okay, then inside of the contract, we can call the constructor. We can call the parent constructor ERC721 and we have to give it a name. So we can call this mammoth NFT. And then we also have to give a symbol like MMNFT. 
So that is going to be the constructor using the parent. Next up, we are going to build a function that allows us to get the total supply of NFTs. This will be a public view function that returns a uint256, and it's going to return our token IDs dot current. So I'm going to create a state variable that I will call my counters dot counter private token IDs. We're using counters dot counter, which means we have to specify that we're using counters for counters dot counter, which means we're using this counters solidity file to get that counter, which means we can have our token IDs which means we can keep track of how many tokens we have because each one will have an ID that's greater than the previous one. So if you have the current one, then that is the latest token ID, which is the total number of our tokens. One more function that we're going to add to the contract will be for the contract URI. This will be a public pure function that returns a string stored in memory. We're going to return a link to some data that the NFT is going to store. So I've already uploaded data to Pinata, which is a place where you can store your data. So let's inspect this link. I'm going to go to my browser and paste in the link. And you should see returned some JSON data. So we have a JavaScript object. We have a key name the collection name, a key description, sample beta, and then an image for the collection, which we can visit as well. This is a copyright free image from pixabay.com. So this will be the image for our collection because for your NFTs, you can have a collection of tokens. So this is just the collection URI, which is why it's called the contract URI. So to create this, you can sign up at the website Pinata and create a free account and then create some data or a data object for your collection, storing values like the name, the description and the image. And you can have more as well. This way, when you upload your NFT or deploy your NFT to a marketplace like OpenSea, you can set your collection details like the name and the image for your collection. You can also do the same thing for individual NFTs, which we'll look at later on in this project. Okay, now this is the base for the NFT, the constructor, the total supply and the contract URI. And of course, everything else comes from ERC 721 URI storage and ownable. We get all of the functionality from those contracts as well and those files. All right, so what we can add that's unique is our own unique minting functionality to create new NFTs from this contract. So I'm going to create a function called a mint item, which will take in the minter as well as the token URI. So the token URI is similar to the contract URI. It's just JSON data, but instead of describing the name the description and the image of the collection or contract, the token URI describes the name, the description and the image for the NFT that you want to mint. So each one is unique unless you have multiples. So here you would just have the same object in Pinata, but for your NFT. So your NFT's name, your NFT's description, your NFT's image for each NFT that you have in the collection. All right, so then back in our contract, I'm also going to add some modifiers. This will be public. It will only be available to the owner. So only the owner of the contract can mint and it's going to return a uint256 of the ID. So let's build out the functionality for this. We are going to call our token IDs and we can call the increment function because this comes from the counters. Then I'm going to grab my uint256 of my new item ID, which we can grab with token IDs dot current, the latest or next token ID. 
which we just incremented. Then we can call underscore mint, which comes from our parent contract, which requires the minter as well as the ID for the minting. We can also call set token URI. Okay, so this is going to allow us to change the URI of our token. So I'm going to set the URI of the new item ID and pass in the token URI, which is the JSON data for the individual token. Then we're going to return the new item ID. And we'll see this function in action later on in the project when we actually call the function. All right, so that is all we need for our simple NFT contract. We can test that it works on Remix or with Brownie with the command Brownie compile in our project folder. This is going to compile my NFT as well as everything that its parents uses. So the parents, remember we had ERC721, we also had Ownable, and everything that they use, like IERC721, that also gets compiled. So we can go back to our project, and in our build, we now have JSON data for our NFT, but also everything else that the parents require. So now we now have contracts under the build. So that's the compiled version of the Solidity contract. Coming up next, we are going to learn how we can build a Python script to automate the deployment of a smart contract with Brownie. So don't miss the next lecture. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.